Hello and welcome. So, Warhammer 40k and the weapons in the game and the law are often called overpowered. They are not, even with their ridiculous power in the grim dark future. They are often nerfed to oblivion. The most egregious of these is the humble last gun. If anyone tells you the bolt gun is more powerful than the last gun, you should laugh at them. The last gun is should be far more powerful than any solid ammunition firing weapon. And this is not a comparison, this is just how powerful the last gun should be. Now, the speed of a last round is the speed of light. It is a laser round. It travels at 299 million 792 458 meters per second. This means on the battlefield, the last round will hit the target less than a second after the guardsman thought about pulling the trigger. Going with the average soldier's reaction time at 1 8th of a second, the longest time sync from seeing the target to the last round hitting the target is the guardsman's reaction time. All of it happens in less than a second. The fastest bullet speed is 1422 meters per second and the speed of a 50 cal is 1209 meters per second. So the speed of a round makes the last gun a great contender. The lethality of the last gun, not the last cannon, just gives shade to so many other weapons. The last gun is a laser weapon, so heat damage is the most predominant form of damage. Being a fast round, that heat must be excessive to damage flesh. Flash burns on humans, a flash burn is an injury caused by radiant heat, are caused at a temperature of excess of 15,000 degrees Celsius. That's just to burn the skin. And at this temperature as well, bone does not just burn, it shatters. So the lowest temperature is going to get hotter. The last round turns the enemy into a pile of ash. This is just skin and not armor. And the way laser weapons work, is by creating a rapidly expanding plasma at the target. Plasma in, is an ionized gas consisting of positive ions and free electrons in proportions resulting in more or less no overall or electric charge, typically at low pressures, as in the upper atmosphere and in fluorescent lamps, or at very high temperatures. Given the pressure is planetary, so Honestly, we're not talking low pressures here, and also there is a way of forming with electricity, but given the distance, electricity is also not an option. So those two are not going to be the cause of plasma creation, it is the high temperature. The temperature that air turns to plasma is 10,000 degrees. To put this in context, the inside of an atomic explosion is 4,000 degrees. Yeah. The material with the highest mounting point on Earth as well is the hafnium carbonitrite, carbonitrite, with a mounting point of 4,100 degrees Celsius. A last gun is going to give anything it hits a spot that is now just molten slag. Even if a last gun hits a tank track, that tank track segment is now a puddle. I'm a tank track. Tank is stationary. No matter what hit, what tank it is, like it does, it's irrelevant. A Land Raider, Sakarin, Lehman Russ, doesn't matter. As for ceramite, and looking through the properties in law, the material is very similar to hafnium carbonide with titanium. So power armor is really nothing to the mighty Lasker. It looks good. But lasers aren't very precise, so while a cut round could easily take off a tank track, the surface area of the hole would be around about 5% larger than the last gun round face. So it would be like if a bullet penetrated it, that's how big it would be. However, the depth would be equal of the length of the last round. If the last round penetrated power armor, it would not go through. It would penetrate the armor, penetrate the space underneath, but it wouldn't be long enough to penetrate the armor behind. Now here's the thing about power armor and ceramite. 
it is a great insulator. It has to be. Which means the heat of the last gun would stay inside the power armor, shattering bones and boiling blood. Now with all this molecular movement and no way to escape, or those who've seen any boiling water in a sealed container will contest, this will get very messy very quickly. And honestly, if it wasn't for the black carapace, it could probably pour this poor space marine out of the armor. That's not hyperbole either. I mean, literally pour him. Like, like a puddle of space marine. So, if the turning space marines into soup in their own army, being able to penetrate anything, how could Alaskan be even scarier? Well, here's the thing. They're cheap to produce. So there is a lot of them. Lots of guns that can penetrate everything and anything, all firing at once. So there you go, there's a brief, a brief overview on why the last gun is absolutely terrifying and is underrated in 40k. Yeah, it's the flashlight, it's the memes and all of that. But honestly, looking into it makes it, make it, makes it kind of fun, it really does. And I like the fact that it's far more powerful than what people give it credit for. Now. One thing I need to address is like I addressed this as a energy weapon. And it was pointed out to me that Dan Abnett uses the term as bolt, and I, I do know it's like Syndergaard's uh, Gaunt's books. But here's the thing I can't just use one author when many other authors counter, you know, contradict it. I have to go with a consensus here. But if we look at it as a ballistic, we, it doesn't change that much. All it really does is when it hits the target, it will drill itself in, reducing energy quickly. And actually it would probably it would not probably would probably it would end up around about fifty percent of the temperature inside the body. So it would go around about ten thousand degrees. It would it would ionize the gas when it hit the space marine, that's when it would hit. That would allow it to penetrate the space marine's armor. And we're not talking 10,000 degrees anymore, we're talking rapid deep, we're talking rapid cooling down to about 4,000 degrees. But rapid cooling also comes with something else. It basically makes that last round into a, well, an explosive round. So it'll be quickly cooled and it will blow, well, the space marine in half of what wasn't disintegrated by the extreme heat. So basically, this is the most grim dark weapon, and GW managed to make it the least grim dark weapon. It really is. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun to make. I enjoy making these science videos. And I hope I'll see you all soon. Have a great day. As always, the links to Railing Games is down below if you want 20% off Warhammer. And there's uh, Forbidden Planet if you like comics, my merchandise as well, my comics, and Patreon as well. Hope you have a good day, and I'll see you all soon.